just every day is like a funeral when we come on this show because we're talking about <laughs> somebody getting killed, somebody not doing their job, someone going missing. And then at this point, we're talking about Matty E and how long he got. So I mean, that, like, is, that is uh, that is today's topic because uh, Diana Rossini was on the uh, the uh, Hogan Johns podcast. Shout out to Adam Hogue. Um, and uh, listen, basically dropped some interesting news on how ownership feels. And here's the reason that I say I said. To start it off, I'm not surprised I'm by not. the news that she dropped, but it is early in the season. So it's one of those things that you're like, oh, wow, we're doing this already. We're having this conversation already. And mm-hmm. I think that's mm-hmm. kind of where you where you start to see it. Basically, it goes on Hogan Johns, uh, and they're talking about how they feel about um, where this team is right now realistically right and and, you know how there it seems like this could get ugly really really quick and I think that it was interesting because she says guess what uh you could go out there and feel that way Bears fans because Bears management feels the same way reason I'm not surprised to hear this who'd you lose to week one Packers you can't get more embarrassing than that we already know how this ownership group feels about that Packers team um, and anytime that you lose in a fashion of, oh my God, we're finally going to get over the hump of Green Bay. Aaron Rodgers isn't there. It's Jordan Love, who, by the way, I told y'all he's not that good. <laughs> that man still, like, he stumbled under his own. Bro, feet. bro, I told y'all, bro. Like, look, it's, it's okay. We're, we're going to be fine. It sucks week one, but as the weeks go on, we're going to be okay. Right, like everybody was waiting for that Rogers moment, and then he threw four incompletions. So we're we're gonna be okay. I'm gonna but, say this though. Go ahead. They probably coached him the same way Justin Fields is being coached. You could look bad all year, but this team, you better be. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it is. And he looked good against us, you know. And so, no, I I totally get it. I saw that clip. Yeah, I appreciate you sending it this way. Yeah. And the one thing I keep telling people, uh, and again, I this is not a new revelation for me, but. George was very specific as to what his goal was. And his goal was to win a championship or be in contention while he had the opportunity to honor, I think it's his mom, right? Virginia's his mom. Yes. Yeah. Um, and, and when you look at honoring it, her, she's not dead yet. Well, <laughs> is, I mean, this, is it honoring her moms to, he, are still here? Is it he honoring? He wanted her to see that. And yes. when you go back and you hear those sentiments, like we can make jokes about that, but you don't play by moms. Yeah. And so, hey, he made those sentiments. And guess what? The next year, what did he do? He put the people Stop in place people to out. get us. He, he did what he needed to do. He got yeah. out the way. I can appreciate a man for doing that. And yeah. so now he's like, hey, and again, think about it. If it was your team, if yeah. this was your product on the field, how would you feel about it? I'm not going to lie to you. There's a reason I'm not an owner, because if it was my team, especially if like my family's legacy was tied to it and you embarrassed me like that on the national stage, I nobody would have a job. Like, I, like this, listen, there's a reason that there are sport owners and there are sports fans. Now, granted, right, when you start firing people and you got to pay them millions of dollars after you fired them, maybe you think a little bit more clearly. But yeah. I just, I, I think that, right, when you talk about the, the, the scenario that the Bears are in, you're now down 0-2. I like hearing this already because it means that they're hearing it inside the building. That means that you're setting a fire under this team and letting them know Mm -hmm. listen and we talked about this a little bit yesterday right realistically i believe justin fields can survive this regime Mm -hmm. but i don't believe that this regime will survive another season that looks similar to last season i think the new regime will move him out anyway well, no, when I'm saying regime, I'm talking about just this coaching staff. I don't think that polls is on the move because I think that, listen, at the end of the day, and no matter what anyone says, Ryan Poles made good moves. He did. I know to start the season, it doesn't feel like it, but Tremaine Edmonds is a good player. TJ Edwards is a good player. They are. Right? Yep. Uh, um, um, the, the young fella, Tyreek Stevenson, looks like he's going to be a pretty good player. You drafted him. Roshan Johnson, we're all high on him. He he's seems like he's going to be a good player if they mm-hmm. give him the opportunity to actually do something. I like DJ Moore as a wide receiver. He's a good player. He was a good, good player. player on the team you had the season before. Do you got to put these pieces together 110%. It doesn't absolve anybody from the job that we've seen them do. The move 
moves that we can be upset about Ryan Poles with, right? I think at this point, we all could be upset about Claypool. I do want to talk about some of his comments as well that he made that I think really sets a fire under everything uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and has me just as confused as ever. But I think realistically, right, like when I look at what Ryan Poles has done, I don't see fault in the team that he's put together. Now, has he, does he need to do more on both lines? 100%. Right, a hundred percent. But I'm not upset. But he also that, right? can't do anything about injury. I, he can't do anything about injury, but but you can do something about trusting Tevin Jenkins, right? Mm -hmm. So there's it's, there's a give and take with everything. I see Rex in the comments already. Shout out to everybody in the chat, right? Jalen Carter's out there balling, hundred percent. He is not taking that away. Jalen Carter's dominating on that side. Jalen Carter Wright don't is, protect the QB. Darnell Wright is not playing poorly out there, and Jalen Carter doesn't protect your quarterback. We all left last season saying, get Justin Fields some help. He did that, right? And so for me, I'm sitting here as we're at 0-2, and, and I'm looking at, okay, this is how Bears brass feels. That's telling the coaching staff, you got to get this in gear. You got to get this together. You don't have the same time that even if we think Justin Fields ain't the guy, Justin Fields has because Justin Fields is still under contract next season. So guess what? Mm -hmm. If all of a sudden I want to say, well, you know what? I don't like what I saw from him this year. We'll have to draft a quarterback. I want to go get an offensive guru and see if we can fix him. Worst case mm -hmm. scenario, we mm -hmm. drafted a quarterback to possibly have to trade that quarterback because he fixes Justin Fields or we drafted a quarterback because Justin Fields ain't the guy and we have to go develop this next guy. I'm not going to let Flus and 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 Getsy do that. Mm -hmm. Now, I mm -hmm. feel like we're a long way away from that scenario, but I do believe that there could be a situation where Matt Eberflus and his team is on the hot seat. And it, it, I, every time I, I'm not going to lie to y'all, <laughs> every time I watch tape, I have to watch it in 25 minute increments. It gets I get worse. so mad. It gets worse. I get so mad because it's, it, I said this yesterday, on, it's incompetent. I said this today on the Chicago Bears pod, Courtney, me and Courtney were kind of going, I don't know what we were going back and forth, but we were talking about kind of the situation that the offense is in with the quarterback and different things like that. And I said, for everything I can say about the quarterback, and Justin has been bad, I don't take that. He's been bad through two games. The system don't make sense. Ask Dan Orlovsky, ask yep. uh, 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 JT, JT O'Sullivan, O'Sullivan. Mm -hmm. ask uh, uh, Greg Gabriel, ask whoever you want to ask. It doesn't make sense. And I'm not somebody that runs to them first. I watch the All-22 myself. I take my notes. I sit there and look at all the things that I, I think of it, and then I go watch them to say, okay, these guys have done this at a higher level. Let me fact check myself or see what I'm looking at here. Yep, and yep. at the end of the day, it's just like, I don't have to be a genius. What it tells me is what y'all are seeing is right. Yep. What I'm seeing is right. What yeah, we're seeing I, I from this coaching try staff to to, is bad. Yeah, I definitely try to listen to JT after I've seen it myself because it's easy. And I encourage all of you all to do that. It's easy to sit there and just hop on a narrative when you it confirms what you what you already believe. But watch it for yourself first. Watch the tape if you can. NFL Plus Premium well, will allow you know. to do it. The tough part is, right, O'Sullivan drops it because I don't even think the All-22 is out yet on NFL Plus. So I get, right, we get the perks that a lot of people don't get. There, Or how about this? There's some people who dropped theirs before his. Like, he dropped his late this time. There's some other people who had access it to it. so long. I didn't have it. I it's didn't have it. It was so long. I didn't have was, uh, the initial. It was, it was 90 it. minutes of him just going, I'm trying not to cuss right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just crazy. I've only got through an hour of it. I didn't watch the last 30 minutes. So uh, but I watched the other people who just had the all 22 or just had the, the film I didn't have. And I just turned the volume off when I don't have it simply because I just want to see what it is. I talk with the guys with it. If y'all seen the same thing, we seen the same thing. OK, clearly this guy who's been coaching these people sees something. Let's see what he's talking about. So now you're learning routes and stuff like that. Just expand your knowledge base a little bit so that yeah. you can have a strong argument if this is something you're passionate about. But all that being said, uh, I, I I'm with you 110 percent on. The, the the brass is now bringing it. But my, my question is, when you say brass, what does that mean? Because I am I am uh, this is speculation. This is just me thinking, you know, ownership versus your GM and vice president versus your coaching. It's, it's levels to this. Right. I think I think your GM, your vice president, 
are are safe. I do, right? Most most GMs get two coaches anyway. I think that those two are safe um, because of the moves that Poles has made outside of Flukes. Yeah, yeah. I think that it does do you a bit of a disservice to the team that you have on your field if you don't believe in the guys that you have in the locker room. I'm not saying that that's what they're saying. I'm just saying that from Poles to all the way up, right, there's got to be somebody going, hey, he got to get this right. Like this is this is bad. Mm-hmm. He he's got to you got to fix this. And it at least right now it feels like you've made pieces that we thought were going to take the, a step in that direction worse. And the Every, funny thing about it, everybody's the one thing you get watching the tape. My bad, bro. The, the one thing oh, you, you get watching the tape. There's no hustle in this team. Facts. There's no H. Every single route I see ran looks like it's run lazy outside of DJ Moore. <laughs> Every I single saw, I saw game. my man go, cut back. He like... And even that, right? Like, I keep seeing this one play that everybody keeps pointing to. And yes, I do think Justin Fields has to let the ball go just in general. But... There's the, the play where you see Roshan going down the middle, right? And you see, I want to say it's, I think it's DJ. It's, I think it might be DJ Cole or DJ. Out. I think it's DJ. DJ's, DJ's uh, uh, cutting up. And then you got Tyler coming underneath. Everybody keeps pointing at that play and saying, you know, um, he That's needs to hit Roshan in this moment. And then at worst, right, you end up hitting Tyler. I feel like he needed to hit Tyler at best. But the problem is I'm looking at where his eyes are. His eyes are on Cole. So that's telling me that your one is Cole Komet on the underneath, not your man up top. That I think Roshan's your three in that situation. And then you're talking about Cole possibly being a four, right? Like there's too many times where it just don't make sense. And it's not just us saying this. It's literally... All your best offensive minds are looking at this and go, well, I don't know. The guys that know the game better than us, right? I don't know. I ain't gonna, guys that know the game every better? Time, every time I say Dan Orlovsky and best offensive minds, that don't go together in my stomach. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I, like, I watched him run out of an end zone. But <laughs> 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 I can't give you best offensive minds. But he's, hey, he's very he's good at what he me. does at breaking him down football. He's I'm not saying he's me. not. It's just it, yeah. he's a lion. You know what I mean? That's really all it is at the end of the day. But yeah. uh the, the crazy thing about it is it still doesn't it doesn't negate I don't think a lot of the plays that you see on Twitter are the plays that you that people need to be harping over like there's definitely plays where Justin is like all right dog that's definitely on you um the play before that to me the play before that me. he's got to release that the time the one I sent in the chat there's yeah. one Tyler Scott just comes underneath it's it's wide open it's so wide open like it's not even NFL wide open it's like it's college and playground me, wide open. For me, a kid in Indiana, it's, it's, it's playground wide open. Run to the yeah. crack and go left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's sure. what it looked like. But so those, so the heat and the, the hate that he's getting right now, I think is warranted. Now, here's where you and I differ. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know. It depends on when this coaching staff gets fired. Because if you make it to the end of the season, you ride this out, you're not going to pay Justin Fields at the end of next season. You're gonna have three. Ba- you're gonna have three definitive. Depends on how he plays years. next season. He got. It, he got. It. Now the the hard part for the QB is right. You have to go into a season with the unknown over your head. That's He's the a- part that scares the QB. But as far as the Bears, he locked up for that year. You yeah. play it for sure, for sure. And that's where the business of the game just becomes the business. Is like, hey, we gonna ride this out and stuff like that. Or you know, you find yourself in a situation where maybe you you're, you're coaching your backup or uh, things of that nature. Who knows? We've seen that weird situation as well. I'm yep. not wishing that on him. It's just like, hey, now we've seen that. Hey, Justin definitely has his flaws. Gets he ain't helping. Ibraflus has to either drop the axe or he's going to get axed with it. If that, if Post has to clear house like that, he's going to be stuck to. I have to draft the QB just in case. Just I don't have any tape to say he's good. I yeah. have to draft the QB. I have to go get my safety net. So he has to get his safety net no matter what. If if they end the season and Justin doesn't progress, no matter how you feel about it, put yourself in Post's position. Did I see enough? I don't have it. I got to sit there and give my exit route. My exit route is I got these picks next season. It's a good QB class. I got to make a move. Whether we like it or not, yeah. you have to see why, hey, always, he's going to have to do that. 
And he's done a good job of it. By the way, 105 people up in this mug, man. 25 likes. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the page. Do talk Chicago sports daily on this channel. Monday through Friday in this Monday mug, through Friday. We so at this here. point, what, again, don't matter how we feel about it. He has to do it. Whether it's Caleb Williams, Shadur ain't coming out next season. Uh, yeah. next, he ain't hitting the draft yet. Like oh, None of that matters. Shadur Somebody's going to get drafted. Shadur might come out. Although Shadur is making ridiculous money. <laughs> He's making more money now He's than making so much a lot money, of people. Bro. So with that being said, that has to happen. Then you're in this weird situation where it's like, hey, are we riding with him? Do I trade this kid for Do I trade who I just drafted? Like you just mentioned, you put yourself in a re really weird situation. The only thing I see now happening, and I think it has to happen to savage this situation, if they really feel like Justin Fields is the guy, you got to drop the axe midseason. You got it. Like you have to drop it soon because you still need the sample size. And we all heard go during the season, up, you don't learn a lot. Like you don't really practice. You don't get the same practice that you would in season that you would off season. So that all the mechanics and stuff that they're going to have to work through, he's he, he's under the gun already. Like the a lot of stuff would have to change. The difference is you gain the comfort in season, though, right? Like it's different than in basketball. Where in basketball, right? Like it's like you better be comfortable because you in this position. Go get a bucket, right? In in, yeah. in football. And, and especially with how the Bears ran it, with how most teams ran it, I, I keep saying that because I feel like because we're Chicago, we so locked in on the Bears. A lot of bad football out there. A lot of bad football. Because of how most teams ran their preseason and stuff like that, We it really looks like preseason out there, right? Even with what we saw yeah. from uh, um, the, the Buccaneers, there were so many mistakes on their side of the ball. How many uh, sure. offensive pre-snap mistakes that we see, right? Like, it, it looks like preseason football. I don't know if people remember what preseason football looked like because we haven't seen real players play in it in so long. But preseason football used to look god-awful. And by game four, we were all ready to end it all because it was a terrible product to see on the field. But guys were ready to go, right? Yep. And with this is what we're going to... I really want to see what happens when we get to week four, not just for the bears, for the league as a whole, because you're going to see a better product. I think it's just going to like, all of a sudden it's going to be like, all right, we ready to go. All right, let's play. And I hope that that does happen for the bears. I hope that we see that in this game coming up, because if we don't, if you start off this season, zero and three, Oh, you could talk about the hot seat being a real thing. And I think just hot on seat. the it's a on, skillet. <laughs> oh my God, bro! No, you're in the cauldron, brother. Like hey, at this point, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, here's the thing: this is the part that you have to really think about too, with how you're starting this season, with how this season could play out. They could go on a run and get you to seven wins eight wins nine wins they, it's, it's all still possible everything's still on the table even though we in we're in uh cold red right now say they get Man, you there I don't say know they get you there hey, maybe not right it, it don't feel like it right now but guess what the 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 jaguars made the playoffs last year trevor lawrence looked horrible but right now it feels like this but you could win that amount of games and if they still feel like the leadership's not there they can still get you out of there I think that Matt Eberflus is 110% on a real hot seat, not just as the guy who has to go out there and develop the quarterback when realistically that's Luke Getzey's job and get this team on uh, on pace to go out and make plays, but you got to prove to ownership that you're the leader that you said you were. And now he's it. about to do, it feels like what we're leaning towards with the whole Allen Williams situation is that Matt's going to take over this defense. I don't know what's going on with Allen Williams. The personal things are going on. We don't know what's happening outside of football, all of that, right? But even when they ask him, hey, when uh, Allen comes back, is he going to take over play calling the defense? Defense play better week two. Defense play better week two. I don't know if Allen Williams is going to. And Allen Williams does not have a good track record as a D.C., Right, like I don't know if he's gonna come back and just instantly take over the defense. He might just end up being something else. Right, there, there's a whole scenario that goes on, but Flus has to prove himself as a leader of men because exactly. right now he's about to have to prove himself as a DC and a leader. Can you do both? That's the real question that I want to see. And I don't look. 
I was excited when Flus came in and said, I need to oversee things and I'm not going to handle play calling. I remember that. Because I was like, great. Nagy couldn't figure out how to handle play calling and running the, and running the offense. I want to see a leader. I haven't seen yeah. leadership, at least to start this season. Well, you know, the funny thing is, I actually like a leader that's a little hands off when it comes to allowing your players. Because you can to, see everything. Yeah. I, you just allow, you delegate and you allow people to make them particular mistakes. Now, how long you allow those mistakes to last. That's the that's where I judge you as a leader. So this is week two. We saw progression in in the defense, but he had to get involved with that. So I actually do feel good as to what he can produce individually. Now, does, yeah. like you mentioned, does that make him a good head coach? Probably not. I mean, for some odd reason, Matt Nagy is an offensive coordinator again. Um, but but and but it don't look good. Bro. It don't look good. But but again, you get the you get the analogy there, like realistically. My so, bad, Samurai J. We missed your super chat, Pat. It is time in my Mufasa voice. There's only there's one person that can fix this. If the Bulls need DR, we need to call in Breeze, baby. Just kidding. We need something. To, hey, y'all. I told y'all stop using my daughter as a lucky charm, man. My daughter is not a lucky First charm. Off, I guess it is. It's your fault we lost the first game because what's the what's y'all want to know? No, this is real. Y'all want to know the, the 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 continuity between us losing both weeks. Orange jerseys. Orange jerseys. Pat wore an orange jersey game one because he thought it was a good thing to do. And then all, he got a white one. He wore an orange one. I wore a white one to game two. He wore a white one to game two. Guess who wore orange jerseys? <laughs> I was so mad. I the was Bears. So, mad. so at this point, it's Pat's <laughs> fault for so game mad. one. It's the Bears' fault for game two. No one hey, can tell me different. Listen, listen. But what if all of a sudden, right? I, I'm not going to lie. I will die laughing. What if in game three, we look like world beaters? Like in game three, Justin Fields to figure out the offense. They wearing white. I'm wearing white. We, that, I, hey, I hang the jersey up. I hang I, the I'm jersey you up. Right now, you know who gonna wear the orange jersey that day? Joe. <laughs> Somebody's gonna wear the orange jersey. Joe got one too, don't he? He got one. He got all. He got every color, but he gonna feel hey, Joe orange. Not, that Joe better not wear orange that day, bro. I'm letting y'all know right now. I see any one of y'all on this show with an orange jersey. <laughs> I'm I'm weak throwing hands, dog. <laughs> you better burn that joint. You better not wear that around me. I'm put red paint on it. <laughs> anyway, oh god. Uh, but all that being said, though, I think the interesting thing is, and I want to hear the chat's opinion on this one. At what? How do you all feel about this season now? And I hate to sit here and gloat a little bit. The games that we have against the rookies that were drafted mean so much more now. Because now we're looking at people who should be underdeveloped, learning their systems. First NFL season, so they they gained this experience. Justin should look better than them. Yeah, we go into Carolina and and, and Bryce Young. Who I, I I swear, I kid you not. I I really hope he does survive. I really do. Like I'm concerned. Yeah, I, I ain't gonna lie to you. I don't think I don't that think he kid gonna, is small, bro. I think he's shell shocked already. But I have to say this: he lined up behind the right guard. I mean, that's how I've seen I've seen pros do that because he was focused on something else. So I mean, <laughs> cool. I, I'm not gonna sit there and kill him. But he didn't at least he didn't stumble he get, over his own feet. He was getting right? killed that game, and then he, he lined killed. up under the right guard. I was like, bro. Hey, so at this point, like, I, but when he had time, he didn't have a whole lot of time. He was throwing what's, shots. What's what's what what is the meaning behind Cole's comment there? I'm not gonna put it up on the screen, but. Uh... So when he had time to throw, he, he was throwing dots. I'm just saying, right? Is the, is the meaning still gets the job done? Like, is that what? I, I don't, I don't, I don't get it, but, uh, That's a wild joke. Uh, uh, but <laughs> so so I'm just saying, I, it's not about him looking better than Justin because I think he's better than Justin. It's about how well you've developed your QB yeah. versus in a situation where there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of things missing. And that's what you look at. I look at how we stack up against, like, Jared Goff. Does Jared Goff look like a better QB? Now nah, he should be. But we all thought Jared Goff was going to be mid coming to the season. I thought he was going to be nice. The game against Detroit looks different now. I mean, I, I think I think we all thought that he was just going to look like he looked last season, but maybe with less weapons. He's looked good. I, I give him that. Good. But it was still, he was still a 4,500-yard passer last year. But, I mean, he looks more confident now. Yeah. We thought he was going to come in mid. He looked more confident now. So these matchups look different. Yeah. You know, the defense for these teams that's sucking are actually pretty decent. Like, the Saints defense held up, despite the fact that they offense was trash. 
Yeah. Defense is going to be ahead of. Uh, I have no is idea what your call was throwing at you. That man hey. just did. Hey. Hey. <laughs> I was like, hey. hey, what's that? Derek so, Carr like, just letting that mug go, man. He just let it fly. It's a Carr double said, coverage. Carr like, said, let it fly. <laughs> so, I, I, had, I had no idea what was going on with that one, man. And let's keep this thing moving along, man. I do want to get into this real quick before we get into the Hester conversation, because I think that this goes to the leadership conversation that we're having here. Uh, Chase Claypool basically came out. And 